the sounds of the city. Noise is a reality of daily urban life. And as Canada's population grows, so too does the relentless noise. Despite the belief that it's something we get used to, the science tells a different story. You know, you can't turn your ears off. Your body is still listening. Uh, you're still hearing these things, and it's still activating our, our nervous system. Tor Oyamo is one of the leading noise researchers in Canada. He says the health effects of noise pollution can be significant. When you're exposed to or hear uh, a sound that you don't want to hear, so a noise, there, it tends to stress you out, and that, that elicits a physiological reaction in our bodies, which then can manifest in a lot of different outcomes, such as heart, heart disease, cardiovascular disease, metabolic diseases like diabetes. The short-term impacts of noise include stress and sleep deprivation, but experts say the most significant health effects happen over years and decades. They can be chronic, and serious. Tor was the lead researcher of a study that found close to 90% of people in Toronto were exposed to daytime noise levels that exceeded the World Health Organization's recommendations of 55 decibels. So it's you know a significant concern over time, over you know months and, and years that really starts to potentially lead, lead to more severe effects. Traffic noise is a 24-hour reality for Toronto resident Silken Joseph. When is the noise at its loudest, and what do you do at home to keep out the sound? I would definitely say around the rush hour period because, you know, you have people leaving work, you have the construction men who are just done the, their work for the day as well, so you have their trucks rolling out, plus the commuters going back home. Like other big city residents, Silken lives in a condo overlooking a busy highway. In her case, that's an eight-lane expressway along Toronto's lakefront. Just enjoying a nice evening on my balcony. I can hear all the roaring traffic of Toronto, of the highway, and just the surrounding streets, really. Canadian cities are loud, and that is in large measure because of cars. In Toronto, cars and traffic account for about 60% of the noise. Even Silken's local park is right next to the freeway. I can't escape from it, I find, and especially because my condo community, like the entire area that I live in, just backs onto the gardener. So it's literally constant noise. It's like having a highway in your backyard. What impact does all that noise have on your health? So I definitely feel a lot less rested, so I'm not getting as sound of a sleep as I'm used to. I'm very much alert, my mind is very much on, and so now I have to shut everything else out and force myself to go back to sleep. It's now 4.20 in the morning. Gotta love living in the city. Waking up in a panic is never fun. Um, whether I think the outside noise is coming from inside my apartment, it's just a matter of that alertness that you don't even get to escape from. It's hard for Silken to escape it. Even her job as a school bus driver is constantly noisy on the road and when the kids are on board. So you leave home from one noisy environment to go to work at another noisy environment, driving the school bus. What's that like? Uh, it's definitely taxing. I love what I do, but I feel like it's literally out of the frying pan and into the oil because I'm in one noise and then I'm into another, and then I feel like I don't get that break in between. It's definitely taxing. So this is a great example of a really loud urban setting. Where are we right now? Well, we're at the intersection of Oxford and Wonderland Road in London, Ontario. We met with Tor in London, 
Like many Canadian cities, it has wide roadways, often right next to homes. You can see as the cars are passing by. 70, 69. See that traffic. Whoa, that brought that up to a 90. Yeah, yeah. Sound is measured in decibels. Health impacts can start above 50 decibels. On the monitor Tor uses to study noise, this intersection is reading above 70 decibels. It's actually a number at which we know uh, hearing damage can start occurring. So if you're exposed to this uh, sound level at, for an extended period of time, you know, eight, eight hours a day. Their prolonged exposure to loud noise is concerning, and not everyone is exposed in the same way. So is there significant disparities when it comes to noise level, depending on someone's income level? And we do see a trend. The higher income areas tend to have lower noise exposures. Homes near airports, or rail yards, or highways. And not everyone can afford to move away to escape the noise. What is the biggest source of noise pollution in our cities? Uh, it's, it's traffic, road traffic, just because traffic is so widespread. So many people are exposed to it. Uh, and again, it's, it is the loudest source. Canadian cities have noise bylaws, and there are strategies to reduce noise, like sound walls. But to create a substantial shift, cities would have to become more creative. To see what can be done, you need to go to Barcelona. In the 1980s, the city was choked by noisy gas guzzlers and plenty of smog. Even today, it's still noisy in parts of the city. 57% of the population live with noise exposure that the WHO considers too much. We've got a big problem of noise. We've got a big problem of pollution, air pollution. And we've got also a big problem of CO2 emissions. Silvia Casaran Martos is deputy chief architect for the Barcelona City Council and a cycling advocate. She says around 130 people die in the city every year from cardiovascular issues related to noise. To reduce the noise, they've created areas of the city known as superblocks. Here's how the superblocks work. Take this nine square block radius. Normally, traffic flows freely, but within the superblocks, the speed limit is reduced to 10 kilometers per hour, and cars have to divert around the area rather than pass right through it. The result? The streets have become more open, pedestrian-friendly, pleasant, and quiet. The changes were not easy at first. Some residents defended their right to drive through and were resistant to the loss of car movement. But since the change happened, these areas are now more vibrant. The, the, the community uh, is really changing because people feel more attached to, the, to their neighborhood, to their city. When they, when they enjoy walking, when they enjoy playing in, in the streets. It's just a question of priorities and political will. Sounds like this. Yeah. You're hearing that constantly. All day, all day. Back in Toronto, Silken wishes her city could be quieter. The noise is having an impact on her sleep and stress levels, exactly what experts say is concerning. Like, I'm always hyper aware, which definitely triggers some form of anxiety and some stress as well. Experts know what's at risk and hope there's the political will to make cities and residents safer from the chronically high levels of noise. What we want to do then really is reduce the proportion of people that exceed those levels in a city, you know, one, one city at a time, one street at a time. Can't tell you the last time I've heard a bird in this city. I wish I could hear silence. I wish I could just not hear anything for a little bit and just hear the life around me.